In retrospect, it wasn't what you'd call a flawless plan. Still, it wasn't like we didn't think it through. I guess we just thought that if we were cute and didn't hurt anybody, everything would work out okay. But it didn't work for the hippies, and it didn't work for us. The world doesn't smile upon creative redefinitions of legality, not even for science. What's wrong with yellow? Yellow and black is what you dress a toddler on Halloween. What? You know, like look at that cute widow bumblebee. Exactly. Yeah, and do you also dress your toddler in samurai swords and badass martial arts skills? Well, you might. Pill Carlisle called herself an anarchist. I'm not sure how much she really knew about the tenets of the philosophy, but it did give her the perfect excuse to do absolutely anything she felt like at any time. Now as a demonstration, I'd like everyone to get on top of their desks and do the chicken dance to the Nutcracker. Harmlessly eccentric, you say? And then there's the fact that it looks like a tracksuit. It is a tracksuit. What's more athletic than killing people? Maybe I just don't like yellow. You know, if anybody had told me we were going to be discussing Tarantino's color wheel all night, I might have actually opted to just, you know... What? Stay home and watch sports? Maybe. Porn is kind of a sport. Yeah, full contact. Greg Friedman did not, in fact, like sports. He'd gone to Dartmouth, or maybe Cornell, I don't know, somewhere for smart people, but he never gloated about it. I think he only decided to go to grad school because he realized how much the real world sucks. Greg was, I don't know. He made gender studies a lot more fun. and may I say intellectually stimulating debate, but there is still one small matter of fact. Don't say it. The project. Don't. Fuck the project. Yes. Fuck the project. Fuck getting a good internship. I don't need to be a psychologist. I can just be a professional drinker bullshitter. Tell you what, sugar. How about you go and buy yourself something tasty at the bar? Because not everybody came up with a great thesis on the first day of class. Fine. But this whole bridal fashion debate it better be wrapped up when I get back. So, this project has to be brilliant. If I don't want a Pulitzer, we're not trying hard enough. Carolyn Hightower, the classic overachiever slash wet blanket. Although her ambition had landed her a nearly spotless academic record and a well-to-do boyfriend, she did have the unfortunate ability to suck the fun out of any situation. It's juvenile. It's obscene. It's a manifestation of a subconscious desire to be desired by men, and I will not be a part of it. Carolyn, it's just a joke. It's not a big deal. Really? Because the way I see it is that parading yourself around in t-shirts with Lick the Bride on it is a form of prostitution. And another thing, I'm not going to sit here and be made to feel like a freak just because I don't want to wear a condom on my head. Adorably suburban, you say? She wasn't even invited to this. Actually, I'm with Carolyn on this one. We have got to figure this shit out. A vague idea. I would settle for a vague idea right now. We could rob a bank and bribe Dr. Manning into giving us an A. We could rob a bank and write a paper about the complex power dynamics inherent in armed robbery. The gun is symbolic symbol. People love that shit. Ooh, we could do it in our underwear. Female object becomes wielder of symbolic symbol. Plus, no one questions hot chicks in their underwear. Actually, that's not a terrible idea. 
What? That's a completely terrible idea. But what if we didn't use real weapons, and we return the money afterwards? Um, I don't think that's how the law works. The paper would probably make you an academic superstar. It could be the next big thing. Sociology meets performance art. The Nat Research Council would eat that shit up. Do you really think it could be the next big thing? You could be the next Peter Behrman. But a bank? I mean, they're pretty good with security. We might want to consider change of venue. What about here? Grabs a bar. Why not? Lowering the bar always brings in tons of cash. Greg told me last year they brought in over 10 grand. Yeah, I forgot Grego used to work here. You just still not hooked up, by the way? Shh. Anyway, the limbo contest ends around like one in the morning. We could show up around closing time. We're like 210, 215. Yeah, and rob them, I guess. <laughs> In our underwear. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Set that outside to dry and then get started on the other two. Wait, I have to do them all? You volunteered for the painting bit. Well, I didn't realize I was purposely picking the short stick. Thanks for sharing. Quit whining. Doing the exit strategy is way more complicated than slapping some matte black on a super soaker. One wrong move could compromise the entire assignment. Uh, heist? What? Heist. You mean it could compromise the entire heist. Sounds better. So, tell me the details of this brilliant heist you've been slaving over. Okay, well, here's our entrance point. And then, after we get the money, we'll exit through the same entrance point and come back here. Wow. How long did it take you to come up with that? I actually spent most of my time drawing the map. Uh-huh. So basically, we enter and exit through the main entrance, then wander on home with a pile of stolen cash? No, not home. Here. It's only three blocks away we could walk it. Well, running it is more likely, I suppose. But nobody is going to suspect Carolyn or <laughs> Blaze of jaywalking, let alone robbery. Heist. And what if someone recognizes you or me? I mean, we've only been friends with Carolyn for about a billion years. All right, Jane Dillinger, what's your suggestion? Scatter. Drop the cash off here, sure, just to keep it safe, and then hightail it out of town. Not too far, just a little out into the country. Somewhere underground-ish, where no one is going to find us. Let me guess. You want to hide out in Clutterbunk? Seems like the most logical choice. That's a first. Think about it, Alex. It's several miles out of town. There's tons of trees around where we can hide the truck. No one is going to suspect us of being there. Even if they did, the threat of hepatitis might give them pause. Sorry, I'm, I'm with you. I just, I wonder how Carolyn is gonna feel when she hears that she has to conduct her observation studies in your leather-studded rat nest hellhole with your charmingly ruminant boyfriend. Okay, first of all, Ogre is not my boyfriend. He's simply a roommate that I occasionally tend to sleep with when I'm bored or breaking bad as in reruns. And second of all, Carolyn can handle it for a day or two. I'm not gonna go commit potentially the only heist of my life and not be able to have a victory cigarette afterwards. You can smoke here! Hello? <laughs> Living room! Okay, I got ski masks and garter belts. Because we never discussed a colored scheme, I got three red, three black, and three white. Ski masks or garter belts? Both, actually. D do I smell cigarette smoke? So, where are we with all this stuff? Oh, this stuff? This stuff that Alex and I have been working on that you expected when you a Pulitzer? All that stuff? Yep, I mean, you did minor in finger painting. Nice. 
And yours was, what was it called again? Accessorizing? Anyway, we have one gun painted and we have an exit strategy. But we do have a question for you. How do you feel about sleeping on Ogre's couch for an indeterminate amount of time, watching a 24 inch black and white for news of our robbery? Heist. Uh, I don't love it. I assume this was your idea. Two words for you. Untraceable, hideout. Okay, two more words, camel lights. Pass. Fine, but just so you know, the only other option is your blissful, aromatic living room. Carolyn, you at home? Oh, goody. Perfect timing. Do you want to tell him he's hosting the post felon slumber party, or should I? Shut up. Here, help me hide this stuff. You're going to smudge my gun. Have you not told him about this? No, not yet. I haven't found the right time. What well, might I suggest you do it before you come home in a thong with a bag full of stolen cash? Shut up. I will once you agree to hide out in Clutterbunk. Fine. Just pretend you're not here. Hi, Kenny. How are you today? Kebo, what's going on? Oh, just some stuff to school. Really? Uh, yeah, we're doing a unit on resistentialism. Uh, we have to present a small scene in which we each represent an item of furniture. Carolyn is going to be a sofa, and Pill and I are going to be end tables. It's uh, going to be groundbreaking when it's complete. You must think I'm pretty stupid to believe something like that. She's not the only one. I mean, um, end table? Well, honey, it's like this. We're conducting an experiment set in a what-if situation along the lines of Stanley Milgram. What is coercion? Is it forced, or is it a softer approach? In English, please? We're going to rob a bar in lingerie! Um... End table? Is this true? Well, kind of. But it's not the whole truth. It's a great opportunity to see how someone will respond to a threat when the aggressors present themselves in something appealing and scary. In other words, you're going to be carrying a gun and flashing your breasts to some random bartender? Honestly, I don't know which one offends me more. Alright, look, I'm going to go take a shower, and when I come back, I want you and I to discuss this like adults. Alone. Ladies. If you don't want to go through with this, Pill and I can do this on our own. And you can document what happens afterwards. No, it's okay. I want to do it. Blaze might not be okay with it, but once the book is published and I'm famous, he'll get over it. Plus, maybe he'll actually be happy for me. Once the book is published? Or shortly after. Wow, that's... That's great and totally normal and not depressing at all. So, what can I do to help? Paint, Paint the, the guns! guns.